Rory Tennant, what is OCLC doing with linked data? How, how big right. is it into uh, yeah. linked data? Well, we certainly have some data exposed as linked data already, primarily the uh, Dewey Decimal Classification, the top three levels of that in several languages. Uh, we have exposed now, has been exposed for a few years. Uh, but just, I just, because I'm, um, why, why the top three levels? Why not the top four levels? Well, <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I haven't been in, directly involved in that project, so I'm not sure why they chose the, you know, that level. But I believe it's because that, at the third level, that's, that's a pretty good um, uh, set of elements that people could actually use that doesn't go down into the nitty-gritty detail of the nth level, which I don't know how deep it goes. But, um, and th there's going to be more of that exposed as well over the coming years. Uh, we're probably within fiscal year 12, we're going to be exposing more of that as well. Um, so look for that. Uh, we're also looking at exposing the uh, FAST classification, which is the facetous subject terminology, which um, might be very useful to people because then that will be a large subject terminology that is available through uh, linked data. Is that, is that the Library of Congress? It's basically the Library of Congress headings that have been exploded to some degree and uh, reformulated to some degree so that it can be useful in a faceted uh, type of system. So rather than having uh, constructed headings like, um, you know, history dash dash United States dash dash dates, you would have different facets that would, could be combined within a search system uh, to uh, find what it is that you need. So there's that as well. And then we're also um, through the virtual international authority file work. We're aggregating authority records for uh, individuals and organizations that. Um, from many different uh, countries of the world, uh, probably I think over a dozen at this point. Um, so that's information about people that we're also going to be exposing as linked data as well. So we'll have lots of good vocabularies out there as linked data to use. You made an announcement at the Laud Lamb uh, meeting that we're at, yes. uh, a brief announcement because it was part of a two minute uh, series of talks. Lightning talks uh, about making available a million uh, bibliographic records for a million books. Yes, can you say a little yes. bit about that? And that will be the available works, in, in the works. Data. We have um, records for the one million books that are the most widely held uh, books that uh, within libraries. So this is really the cream of the cream, if you will, of uh, bibliographic data for books. So that we're looking at exposing as linked data under. Um, Open Data Commons license, uh, so that people could uh, have this book data that they could then link to uh, from their uh, data, their linked data. So why do all of this as linked data? Well, it's a very good question. I think we're still trying to figure out where some of the benefit is in linked data. Uh, I think we're lacking some of the real killer apps, if you will, or the tools perhaps that will really make linked data effective. So. The first step is to put the data out there, useful data out there that people actually might want to work with, and then we can start building the kinds of tools and interfaces and, and uh, those kinds of things that will illustrate whether this kind of data exposure is as useful as we uh, think that it may be. Uh, but there's other ways we, we're exposing the data. For example, we have numerous uh, application program interfaces or APIs that we um, use to expose the data to software applications. Uh, and those continue to be useful and effective for everything from you know, mobile apps uh, to uh, production systems on the web. So um, we're, we're basically pushing on all fronts uh, in order to get that data more exposed so that in a structured form so that people can use it in their systems. Uh, and, and yet not all of OCLC's data is publicly available or uh, openly available. Um, so there seems, to, there seems to be some tension um, in its thinking. Well, yeah. I mean, for, for example, the basic search API right now, you can search uh, all of our records and you don't have to be affiliated with OCLC to do that. Uh, however, to get the full record, the full MARC record, uh, then you need to be a, a member library, member institution, and that kind of thing. So we do have some limitations on access to the data, which is primarily around 
um, membership and do you contribute your holdings into the, the common pool and so forth. Um, so, you know, partly that's because, as you can imagine, managing a very large data set is time consuming, costly, and so forth. And so we need to uh, be able to fund the infrastructure to um, not just keep it going, but also improve it. We're constantly improving the metadata uh, that we hold. Uh, people don't widely know that, but we're, we always, we're doing a lot of things like deduplication and actual enhancements of the records themselves, mostly through software, but also through pe people power. And that requires um, money to do that and to support that and make that available. So, you know, putting up the entire data set in its entirety for anyone to grab, um, we don't think will lead to a good ecology of management of that data over the long haul. It, it does seem like serious, um, a serious tension, though. Um, over the long term, how do you see this um, working out? Well, I mean, over the long term, I think where we'll see is that the data will be widely available, where we will get the money to maintain this infrastructure that we're working with is through services and other kinds of things. But that's a transition, and that will require time to, to accomplish. You want to put a, a date on that? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> Thought I'd ask. Okay, Roy, thank you very much. Thank you.